Pokemon Sword and Shield's the Isle of Armor is best known for its fighting dojo where only the best trainers in the Galar region train to become Pokemon Masters. Champion Leon, or should I say former Champion Leon, trained at the Isle of Armor but never managed to overcome the training Mustard put together. In the last video, we saw how my adventure in the Isle of Armor started. In this video and in this story, we will see how a young man, yes, I said man, young man at that, and his cup Fu become Galar heroes. Got you. Our story is about to begin and move forward at that when Mustard brings out the best Pokemon in the game so far. It's a it's a cub fu and I don't mean cub fu is the best Pokemon in the game I mean, of course look at this little thing. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Look Punching air right now punching the bag or whatever that was and hold up. It sees me and This thing is not as bad as it thought it was. It's actually a very shy Pokemon I mean, I don't blame it. I, I'm, I'm pretty attractive. No, no doubt about it, but <laughs> Mustard laughs at me but as I was saying I don't mean that Cub Fu is the best Pokemon in the game. I mean Urshifu, excuse me, Urshifu is the best Pokemon in the game right now. Uh, but raise it with diligence and it'll become strong enough to see through the battle. No opponent, I, I can't read it because I'm going too fast right now. Uh, it doesn't seem to have much confidence in himself, obviously, obviously. So I was thinking, Elvin, maybe if it joins you on your adventure, that'll help break it out of its shell. So take care of Kabu, okay? So Master, uh, I'm gonna call him Master Roshi still. Master Roshi actually entrusts me with with a a Kabu, a legendary Pokemon. Master Roshi, you made the biggest mistake of your life, my boy, because I'm not the trainer that you think I am, you know? So Kabu becomes my Pokemon here. I don't give it a nickname or anything like that. The first, uh, I'm, I'm of course going way too fast for this again, but this is all pre-recorded by the way. I'm just kind of talking over it. So I, you guys know exactly what my thoughts were throughout the battle. So right here, Mustard is going to entrust me with the Cub Fu and wants me to become friends with Cub Fu. It wants me to become a little bit closer to it, to break it out of its shell and Cub Fu not to be shy. Um, this is actually going to be really interesting here shortly. Uh, so basically what we have to do is go sightseeing and that's exactly what you guys are about to see here so the first place i, I don't remember the name of this desert but um obviously it, i found this part funny because there's nothing to see everything's just dusty there, there's absolutely nothing and the second place here it, it wasn't bad it's, it's actually a pretty nice view over by loop lagoon uh i think it's by loop lagoon i i think so i i don't remember but that was a pretty cool place and then this place here in the trading lowlands, uh, that place was pretty cool too. And the sec and the last place was, let's see here. Oh yeah, the last place was in the cave. I, I really didn't think much of the cave to be honest. I mean, sure, if you're a person who loves caves and going on, hike on hikes on caves, that's awesome. So before everything, I actually ended up training my Cub Fu and Eevees. Uh, so 252 attack, 252 speed. And this is actually the same Cub Fu that we used in the Wi-Fi battles and actually we're having another Wi-Fi battle with this team on Friday So stay tuned for that my boys All right, so Master Mustard here Master Roshi invites me to go out for a walk and it's a pretty cool Dum dum dee dee la 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 dee da Dum dum I don't remember but anyways So I guess this is good a spot as any so kind of brings me sightseeing and this is where he brings up the the Tower of Two Fist. And this is really the biggest challenge that we're going to face within the Isle of Armor. Keep in mind that all of my Pokemon were underleveled. And they're basically going to be underleveled throughout the entire playthrough. Except for, for the end where you guys will see. But basically, we get to choose either the Tower of Waters. Or we get to choose either the Tower of Darkness. And you guys are about to see which one I'm about to choose in a, mo in a moment. And I did think about this a lot, to be honest. I wasn't sure which one I was going to challenge. But as you can see, we decided to challenge the Tower of Watchers. And look at this tower. Looking absolutely tall and beautiful. So, hello, my name. I, I'm the Tower Master. Go up to level 70 at least so the training goes smoothly. 
you guys are about to see what level my kung fu is okay it, it absolutely um under leveled I, i'm not going to tell you exactly how many but it, it's definitely under under leveled so obviously we cannot turn back once we reach the tower of waters and we reach our first opponent opponent i can't even speak right now it's it's pretty late but anyways my opponent standing tall just staring at me and i'm like all right let's let's go ahead and battle this this girl here so we're about to square off rain falls to become a river such as a great cycle of water i will swallow you whole i think that's what it said so battle by match master dojo student who sent out her side duck now you guys are probably gonna laugh at the way i'm gonna i'm gonna do these battles here in just a moment but hear me out so the first thing i want to do is go for a bulk up here because i'm thinking this thing is going to try to hit me in the physical side and also i want to make sure i one hit ko this thing i don't want to waste two turns on trying to knock this out even though i technically did goes for a water pulse and luckily for us doesn't doesn't uh confuse us and a close combat knocks out the side duck and so once we do that we're on to the second uh master student dojo I, or master uh, what is it called again yeah i have no idea master dojo student so I, I was close he sends out a krabby uh and i'm basically going to do the exact same thing as i did last time i'm gonna go for a bulk up thinking this thing is gonna hit me with a crab hammer or something like that but actually ends up hitting me with a bubble beam and I'm like, dude, why are you going to use a bubble beam on my Kung Fu? Doesn't do a lot of damage, thank goodness. We're going to go for a second bulk up. Honestly, I don't know why I went for a second bulk up. Um, yeah, I, I really don't. I, I think in my thought process throughout the battle, I thought Krabby was going to be a really bulky Pokemon, but it really isn't. I knock it out with the first close combat of the battle, uh, of this battle, of course, and Krabby goes down. On to the third battle. Raindrops may be small and weak, but I don't know what else it said. So we're challenged by, I think this is the third Master Dojo student, and she sent out a Meryl. And, you know, I'm thinking this is easy peasy. I forget Meryl is a fairy type, and I actually forgot that during the time. But Meryl's actually going to go for an Aqua Jet, and I'm going to use my, I'm going to go ahead and just hit it with a Thunder Punch. Meryl survives, and it hits me, it, it doesn't hit me with an Aqua Jet. I'm thinking of something else, but... I knock it out with a second thunder punch thank goodness and down goes the marrow now the fourth opponent uh with the fourth master dojo student was kind of rough on me so this guy is about to send out his poly whirl here and i of course send out my cub Fu ready to battle now on the first turn i'm gonna go ahead and hit a bulk up because like like i thought on the previous pokemon this thing is probably a physical attacker and this thing actually ends up going for a mud shot and you know what mud shot does you're about to see lowers my speed stats and that's actually qu kind of huge and now it hits me with the whirlpool and i'm like okay this this is a little bit of a problem trapped in the vortex i hit it with a thunder punch thinking it's gonna knock out and this thing le this thing lives at like one hp i get some damage because of the whirlpool both of our pokemon are kind of just like worn out at this point goes for a protect I mean, th this Pokemon caught me off guard. And keep in mind, I only brought Kabu to the Tower of Waters. I, I This is my only Pokemon that I'm going to be using throughout this entire playthrough. So he goes for the Whirlpool. And I, I get knocked out. So that was a little bit rough. And this guy's just kind of just jogging there. He's like, Kai, you, lo you lost. And you and your Kabu suck. Well, obviously, we were underleveled highly highly under leveled and this this guy's just kind of rubbing it on my face um after careful consideration i was wondering if i should have continued to train my pokemon a little bit higher or if i should just uh re-challenge it right off the bat and i really wanted to keep this a challenge so what i ended up doing here is got my pokemon healed up first and foremost and we went straight into the battle uh into the tower of waters again so i got through my first couple opponents quite easily all with thunder punches i didn't really bulk up or anything like that so as you saw the the side duck went down crabby goes down in one attack also with a critical hit so that might have mattered and then the marrow goes down after a thunder punch also and that is right after it hit me with a knock widget also so finally we reached the third the fourth opponent here the guy we lost to the same guy who sends out his poly world kind of jogs and just makes fun of me there 
I send out my Kung Fu. And that was a firework. It's firework season. But he goes for a bulk up. Uh, well, I go for a bulk up. Sorry about that. And he goes for a mud shot. Of course, lowering my speed again. So I'm going to go ahead and take a whirlpool to the face because I'm, I'm slower than my opponents. I'm going to keep taking some damage here uh, because of the whirlpool moving forward. And Thunder Punch, of course, knocks me out. Or not knocks him out almost I, I don't even know what i'm saying I'm, I'm really tired right now he goes for a protect and i go for a thunder punch this time obviously not not going to do anything since he protected itself i'm taking some whirlpool damage and things are not looking very good for me here so he goes for another whirlpool and i just happen to survive at nine hp and i now i hit it with the thunder punch and knock it out so that commentation right there uh, was really bad Com commentation isn't even a word is it's but we finally get through this guy and He's like all right. You can now go to the top floor once I reach the top floor Mustard is waiting for us and he he supposedly knew we were gonna choose the tower of waters and was waiting for us Even though I'm sure he says the exact same thing uh, for the other ones but It bas basically is going on about the final essence and and the you know water and what's so not and this thing uh th this master roshi here does a couple of tricks and this kind of caught me off guard so he sent out a cup foo and i i had a couple battles with him uh i'm not gonna lie and you guys are about to see that i didn't know his cup foo had a focus sash and you guys are probably not gonna see that throughout this playthrough and i i kind of skipped through that but he has a focus sash and I go for a bulk up, just trying to survive an attack from this thing. And a little cutscene comes up here. And basically, Master Roshi here is, is really serious about what's going on here. And his Kapu hits me with an aerial lace. Basically, does a lot of damage. If, if I didn't bulk up, we would have gone down there. So I tried to heal my Pokemon as much as I could by going for a Hyper Potion. Try to live an attack, you know? And this thing goes for a Brick Break. So I'm like, okay, that, that's not good. I'm going to go for an energy root. Maybe I can catch him going for a different move or something like that. And I go for an energy root, as, as mentioned before. He goes for brick break. So basically the same exact sequence as you saw last time. So I'm like, fine. I'm going to click close combat here and hope it knocks out. I'm at a plus one. By the way, before I got this Kabu ready for competitive battling, I got a modest nature Kabu, if not timid. I don't remember, but it was a hindered attack nature. Uh, but a good speed nature so we weren't doing as much damage as we would have liked to do here and we essentially get knocked out so i i blasted through the battles again and we went to battle mustard again who sends out his kung fu of course and it just pummels my my own kung fu here kung fu's ready to go for a battle knocks me out with a brick break on the second battle so basically the same exact thing as last time on the third battle i didn't bulk up and he knocked me out with an aerial ace on the fourth battle he hit me with a brick break and this is the battle where uh, he hit where i hit him with a i think i hit him with a zen headbutt and he lived on a focus sash i was absolutely bugged I was absolutely annoyed here and I went I, I didn't want to train my Pokemon so I was just gonna keep going I, I went and I knocked out each Pokemon that we battled prior to that uh, before Master Roshi with a thunder punch and that was my that was really my best bet here and finally we reached Master Roshi's level again so level five of the Tower of Waters here he of course sends out his Kupfu after doing his uh, flips and what so not and I, of course, I'm going to go for a bulk up, given that I learned my lesson after a first aerial lace that knocked me out in one attack. As you can see, Cup Fu is a little bit of a higher level at 61. I live the aerial lace kind of comfortable, but not really. So here, I, I ended up giving my Cup Fu a Rocky Helmet to kind of break that Focus Sash since we're using items now. And I go for another bulk up, try to knock this thing out for sure. He's going to take some damage to the Rocky Helmet, and I hit him with a close combat, and finally... After four, I think it was four attempts. Um, yeah, I think it was four or five attempts. We defeated Master Roshi. 
What a team. Impressive. Most impressive. I definitely agree. I look at Cub Food really happy, and Cub Food looks at me really happy because I, I feel like I was letting him down as his Pokemon master, to be honest with you guys. But he starts punching the air. Uh, make a meme out of that if you guys want to. But he starts punching the air. Really excited. Cub Food is such a cute Pokemon. I kneel down and I'm like, Cub Food, you did a good job, buddy. What, what, you know, some anime stuff right, right there. And. Mustard kind of praises me because I did a really good job with Kung Fu in training and I think Kung Fu and I learned a very valuable lesson of Kind of just keep going even when you think you're down and finally It's time to evolve the Kung Fu. So I'm, I'm not really gonna talk here so you guys can bear witness to this beauty here um, I'm just gonna shut my mouth now Behold, before you stand our Shifu, the underlying armor that will shatter any blade against it, and it has mastered the style of water. So it's rapid style. Look at how beautiful her Shifu is. I, I absolutely love this Pokemon. It's probably it's probably one of my top five favorite Pokemon, to be honest. I, this thing is just it's pretty good in competitive battling. Uh, given it has a uh, right supporting cast obviously and you guys have seen that within the battles that we've been having But I I just love the design of this or Shifu here I know in the last video we talked a lot about how we dislike Clara This video we're basically talking about how much we love her Shifu So finally after all that shenanigan shenanigan pass where I lost a, a handful of times to master Roshi and one to that one tower student master whatever he was it was all it was definitely a journey so we decided to go back to the dojo as you can see hop was waiting for me there and he's excited to see me i'm excited to see him i actually like hop as a character to be honest with you guys i like him a lot so basically they're just talking about the isle of armor and how leon had trained at the isle of armor hop also uh oh no it I, I, I was mistaken. It was only Leon that trained at the Isle of Armor and basically Mustard is inviting Hop to stay at the Isle of Armor and basically after all of that nonsense uh, He tells me by the way Her sheaf was capable of Gigantamaxing too, but it's a bit tricky because it just can't be with the state taste of the max mushrooms You need to have another item and you guys are gonna see what that item is here shortly, but now me and hop have to go to a whole mission to fight figure out what this is going to be because i'm not going to say anything just just read it just read it he forgot what it was i i was you know i was a little bit annoyed at this because i, I thought i was already done with my journey with uh urshifu and i thought i was going to be able to make this thing gigantamax just by evolving it but we have to go through a whole nother mission to get this thing to Gigantamax and I know I said I love Hop, I, I, well I like Hop, I don't love Hop, I, I just like him as a character but now I have to do a whole mission with Hop to Gigantamax or Shifu here so thank goodness Hop is smart, smarter than me he's, he's a smart person but he's also smarter than me because I would not have known what that certain something was so thank goodness he did his research and it turns out that this pokemon likes flowers and plants and he reckons that you know this this item has to be in the forest so we we go out for uh for the exploration here and we just walk out of the dojo and we decide to stroll or, or to go to the forest to focus that's going to be our first starting point here as you can see me and hop are just hanging out talking about uh the, the forest to focus and how glimmer tangle is nothing compared to this thing but anyways onto the story here um well he's talking about i'm, I'm just trying to you know ha progress this here so he saw signs of lilligan and applin both pokemon who gather a bit of sweet nectar which may be the item that we need in order to make urshifu gigantamax so we stroll a little bit we find out that there's a little petty lil who looks a little bit worried it, it looks really sad to me i mean look at this little cute pokemon hop says oh it's a petty lil it evolves into lil again the thing is that this uh, petty lil is actually 
acting a bit strange and i'm like hop it, it's i think it's a bit lost it, it looks sad and it's also lost um and it's pretty little compared to other petty little according to hop so it, it's safe to say that this thing probably lost its mother and I, that was actually my first initial thought and reaction when i when i first encountered the lilligant here so go find go help him find his parents i'll stay here with uh with the uh, petty little says hop and i go stroll the forest to focus and i said hey have you lost i, I didn't want to be like hey we have your petty little because for all we know petty little probably doesn't belong to this lily Gent, and essentially we'd be guilty of kidnapping or helping with kidnapping uh, but i'm like hey did you lose a pokemon by chance or are you looking for someone and lily Gent is like yeah so we stroll back and go back to hop where Lilligant and the Petty Lil are reunited. And then Lilligant thanks us. It gives us a little bit of its nectar. Hop tastes it for some odd reason. Like, why Why would you taste that, Hop? What if it's poisonous? Anyways, Hop tastes this nectar at, uh, right after these two Pokemon leave. Uh, Lilligant just kind of hops. That's kind of funny. Uh, see ya, Lilligant. So Hop tastes it. And it's sticky and sweet but it's not what it, it's not what we need to make urshifu gigantamax so now we got to go find an applin and this was actually the the fun part of this little uh i i guess you would, you'd call it a little venture here or adventure so we we continue to stroll through the forest of focus and we find an applin um and Applin kind of gets startled. It gets startled and, and runs away. Well, rolls away. I mean, look at that. And me and Hop just chase it. We just chase it. And it turns out that this thing is hiding. Uh, we don't know where it's at, even though, as you saw, it was it was hiding on the tree there. So I'm like, all right, let me let me go to the tree and call the Applin here. So Hop, as naive as he is, he's like, what's going on with that tree? And this applin straight up clocked me in the head. It's like, you know what? I'm just gonna launch I, I felt like like Newton Like Isaac Newton uh, it, An apple just straight up fell on my head, but basically the applin uh, Actually dropped a little bit of its uh, nectar hop taste it. I mean, I wouldn't I, I why would you taste I was gonna say that I guess it's not gross tasting the apple, but he the nectar came out of the applin, and applin is a little bug. It's a little worm inside of the apples. So that's kind of that's kind of gross. Hop, I mean, come on, have have Rashifu tasted of anything? So basically, we're kind of stumped, and uh, Hop doesn't know what's going on, and a venipede kind of strolls by, and he's like, "Wait a minute!" He gets a light bulb here, so he's like, "I got it." I was stuck on Pokemon that produce nectar, but we needed a Pokemon that uses that sort of nectar to produce something else. And I was like, something like honey, right? And he's like, exactly. And when it comes to Pokemon that connect that, we'll collect it. It's obvious, right? The Beehive Pokemon. So those are the, I forget the names, the Combi and the Vespiquin. Uh, oh, well, he said it right there. So he's like, and if we're talking about the Isle of Armor, then it has to be on the island shaped, uh, the island that's shaped like a, ho a honeycomb. And that's none other than Honeycomb Island, of course. Um, it's obvious within the name. So I decided to head over with Hop to Honeycomb Island. And there's a bunch of Combi there, but there's no sign of Vespiquent. So Hop's uh, radar uh, spot or power spot detector goes off. And there's a power spot right in front of us. And he's like, you know, there's got to be something on that tree. Basically, we're messing with the world tree here and Queen Bee. So it smells like honey. I decide to shake the tree. Look how huge that tree is. I don't know how we even have the strength to shake that thing, but look at that. I am buff. We shake the tree a couple times. And Vespiquin. Well, you hear a bunch of beep, uh, a bunch of buzzing, right? Beep, beep, beep. Gigantamax, or not Gigantamax, Dynamax energy surrounds the tree. And then we're in the point of view of the Vespiquin, and it attacks me. It straight up attacks me. I'm, I'm doing this to Gigantamax or Shifu. At least bug hop or something. Like, wh why couldn't it sting hop? Or, or why couldn't the applin fall on hop's head, you know? It has to be me. So, we encounter the giant Vespiquin. Uh, I end up knocking out the Vespiquin. And a strange comb of honey 
falls from above and we obtained the comb of max honey and that's exactly what we're gonna what we're going to want in order to gigantamax her shifu so all of that just for vespiquin i mean if this was some kind of honey or uh, i was gonna say honey the poo but winnie the poo i myself could have said you know what it's a vespiquin or I, I wouldn't have thought vespiquin i would have said you know what let's let's get comey and then uh you know kind of get stuck there i uh, probably wouldn't have thought vespiquin until hop came along but thank you hop sorry to diss on you so much but of course um we go back to the dojo and mustard was actually really surprised that me and hop cracked the secret i'm taking the credit because i'm the one that took all that damage to the head and almost got stung by a vespiquin so come on now hop now um he didn't forget what that certain something was he actually wanted us to figure out what that certain something was and thanks to hop or thanks to me i should say we 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 got that taken care of so the little cook person uh student comes in and he says we can add max honey to our max soup and that will make urshifu gigantamax and urshifu obviously liked that idea so finally mustard decides to challenge me to a final battle and and this is him going all out and i mean going all out he he actually didn't care he 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 went all out and i battled him twice but on the first battle all of my pokemon were level 50 eb trained at that so i used one of my battle teams and i got molly Wop. so i'm only going to show the second battle for time's purposes here but anyways um i actually take the time uh right after all of these cutscenes, of course i decided to take the time to give or shifu the max soup that it needs in order to gigantamax and i headed to the master dojo where mustard was waiting to battle me and this is this, this honestly feels like the biggest battle of the game even bigger than when i became champion of galar uh it, it felt even uh, probably not to the intense of when you battle leon because leon was undefeated and you know that was a pretty cool feeling but it it, it almost matches that so he goes all out again. Uh, basically, Master Roshi is about to send out a Mian Shao. And I'm like, okay, Mian Shao, I'm going to use Bolt Town. You guys probably know exactly what team I'm using based off of this Pokemon. So my Dynamax band goes off. I'm ready to Dynamax. And M Mustard is pumped. He he's really pumped. And he he commands his Mian Shao to use close combat. I thought I was going to be able to tank this or not tank it, but I, I thought I was going to be able to take this to the face and dish out an attack after i got attacked but no we just go down in one attack so i'm like all right i'm about to go hard on this boy so i send out my only level 100 pokemon in this team level 100 gengar the shiny gengar we used in a in a in a competitive battle here hit it with a shadow ball hit it with a crit which probably mattered to be honest with you guys but this knocks out the mian shao in one attack and shortly after he sent out his luxray which intimidates me and obviously that doesn't matter so i decided to hit this thing with the shadow ball again and luxray is not not that bad of a pokemon it ends up living at a really low hp so it hits me with the psychic fangs putting me at about half and he's like you know what i got the skill and i'm like you know what screw the skill your your luxray is gonna go down here so go for another shadow ball Luxray goes down and out, calls it back, and this time he's going to send out a Corviknight. And I'm like, all right, we're about to go down here. So what I'm about to do is have Gengar use Destiny Bond here, predicting an attack from Mustard here. But Mustard's actually a really, really smart person. He goes for a light screen since I'm, I'm doing a bunch of uh, special damage to it. And I'm like, all right, so I'm just going to hit this thing with a Shadow Ball. And Corviknight actually retaliates we get the special defense drop which kind of comes in handy and it, it hits me with a brave bird and i'm like uh oh we're going down here but gengar actually lives this at 14 hp and we're like all right we're gonna click shadow ball here instead of destiny bond because the shadow ball should knock out i don't know if i if i was right if it knocked out before the crit but that crit might have mattered we get another critical hit and we get lucky again so this time he sent out Kamo. i'm gonna go for a destiny bond because i'm not about to deal with any Kamo shenanigans goes for the clanging skills knocks out my gengar lowers his own stats not that it matters because this Kamo is about to go down with gengar so 
Kamo goes down, Gengar goes down. We're both losing Pokemon like as, as fast as we can blink. And this time I sent out an Excadrill, thinking I'm gonna be able to do some damage, right? He sends out a Lycanroc. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, first he's gonna set up a Stealth Rock. I don't know why he didn't just go for an attack, to be honest, but I'm about to hit this thing with an Iron Head. An iron head. And it knocks it out in a single attack. So I'm like, all right, I'm doing pretty good. And he's like, whoa, I see you can do super effective attacks too. And I'm like, what do you think? I'm the champion of Galar, uh, Master Roshi. Come on, I'm, I'm the Goku of Pokemon Sword and Shield. So he's like, you know what? I'm about to go, uh, to go all out on you. So he sends out his Urshifu, the single, stri the single strike. I, I don't know the name of the Urshifus yet. I know Rapid Style Strike or Rapid Style Urshifu. I think it's rapid style strike. I, I I don't know the name of the Urshifu is the point I'm trying to make. But he's like, all right, I'm about to go all out on you. So he, he grabs his Ultra Ball, calls him back, and he's about to Kamehameha us with a Gigantamax Urshifu. And he does exactly that. This this Urshifu absolutely wrecks my team. You guys are about to see. So this is his highest level Pokemon at level 75. And Urshifu is looking awesome, looking beautiful. And I, I switched out my, my Excadrill for the Claydol, as you guys saw. Hits me with a Max Knuckle, and I'm like, all right, we're taking that easy. Which we do. And right here is when things get real. So he's like, you know what? This is, I'm about to blow your Claydol back. I don't care about his friends. I don't care about his family. I don't care about anything. He just one shots my Claydol with that one punch move i i don't, I don't even remember the name I, I i missed it there but he knocks out my clay doll and i'm like all right halucha is about to put in the work on this thing take some damage because of the stone edge or not the stone is the rocks or here i go calling wrong names again but the stealth rock i go for the high jump kick connects and it does nothing com compared to what he's doing to me so he knocks out my halucha with the max ooze and i'm like okay i see you then Call my Halucha back and I'm like, all right, Excadrill, you need to put in the work against this bad boy. Of course, get its damage with the self rock also. And this time I'm like, all right, I'm gonna hit you with an earthquake. Probably gonna call it a game now. And her Shifu's just like, you know what? I don't care what you think. I'm about to hit you with the close combat this time. And it knocks out my Excadrill. I'm like, dude, we're, you, you legit knocked out my level 100 Gengar. All of my Pokemon are not as level as yours, but they're pretty close and they're EV trained and IV bred. And I'm like, all right, Urshifu, I'm not even gonna Dynamax here. I'm just gonna have you go for asserting strikes. And thank goodness we knocked this thing out. So Urshifu goes down finally after it pummeled like four of my Pokemon. So almost almost got a sweep all by itself. And Master Roshi is just like. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. Take my take my rare league card. I think it's his rare league card. Yeah, it's his rare league card. And it's pretty cool. You guys should check it out if you guys haven't had it already. But anyways, everybody's like, wow, that was a really cool battle. So, oh, darling, did I hear this right? You actually lost? I mean, can we just talk about, and I didn't mention this in the last video. Can we talk about how old Master Roshi has a very young wife? Well, not very young, but she, she's pretty young compared to him. He already had, he's he's like 78 years old, and this girl's like 57, if that. But anyways, Clara comes in, she's like, um, well, I should congratulate. She's kind of awkward, you know? She's like, that, shared, that cleared up a lot. You're strong enough to beat Master going, going into this, whatever. And she's going to take me on fair and square. And I was like, all right, I don't think I'll lose. And she's like, you know... You kind, of, you kind of piss me off and I'm like yeah I think I know that because you're a crybaby but you know I guess after the last video and how we how much we bashed on Clara Clara's not that bad I mean I I, I just don't like how she's a crybaby but she's not that bad but anyways er, uh, um mustard says something that kind of throws me off and I think it threw a lot of us off but I think this is going to reference into the crown tundra and we're just going to leave it at that so that is the story to how I became a hero in the Galar region. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below on your thoughts about the Isle of Armor and subscribe to my channel for more Pokemon Sword and Shield videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.